Former FAA Inspector General Mary Scavo has spoken out for a long, long time about the lack of security at our nation's airports. Mary, good morning. Good morning, Katie. I'm sure you have much to say this morning along those lines. Well, uh, much to say, but also great sadness, not only for the families and the tragedies, but for the warnings that have gone out to the government for the past 10 years, and not just by me, but also by other folks about the grave risk to domestic aviation, and now to have it culminate in such a disaster, it, it's really unthinkable, uh, but it's just made more tragic by the warnings the government had. Mary, well let's, well, let's talk about those warnings, because as the FAA Inspector General, when you were serving, did you ever contemplate or speculate about the possibility of, of domestic flights, innocent civilians being used as basically a, a human missile? Uh, well, we didn't, you, we didn't talk about it in those terms as human missiles, but we certainly did talk about on many occasions the risk to domestic aviation, and we compared it to uh, certainly the inadequate but the greater safeguards on international flights. We penetrated airports on two occasions. We did two investigations, 93 and, and um, 95, 96, and we were able to do these kinds of things at airports all over the country to pour, point out the great weaknesses in the airports, that you can get anything through security, and in this case, then, since there appears there were so many individuals involved on each of these hijacked planes, um, it is also possible that they were able to get persons employed within the airport because the background screening process is really very woeful. So you gave warnings, or there were warnings, were they virtually ignored? Uh, practically virtually ignored. We issued uh, written reports um, and my successor, the current IG, actually repeated the studies again in 99. So there were three very clear nationwide studies of airport uh, security laxity. Um, we issued warnings to the Federal Aviation Administration, um, warnings to the Secretary of Transportation, warnings on the first report to the President of the United States, on the second report to the National Security uh, Advisor. Um, so the warning bells were sounded. We issued the reports to Congress and the Senate, but the, re the response was the same. Look, they said, we've never had a domestic aviation uh, terrorist attack against domestic uh, flights and facilities, so the risk for domestic is, in their opinion, at that time very low, and so they didn't take it very seriously. And was tragically, others apparently were heeding the, the, the weaknesses. Was money an explanation that it would cost too much yes. to beef up security domestically? Yes, uh, unfortunately this is again another one of those situations where money was an excuse. Uh, one very high-ranking official, I mean this is just so tragic to say this, uh, I have written about it in, in a book, but um, they talked about the cost of Pan Am 103, the tragic bombing over at Lockerbie, uh, being around three billion or in the, in the low billions. And the cost of making U.S. airports and doing all these security measures for domestic flights and domestic traffic to be around $10 billion. And even if they did have another Pan Am 103 in the next 10 years, you know, the cost was just too great to make airports safe. And uh, someone even quipped, and it's just tragic at this point, that if they made aviation completely safe, they'd just bomb something else. So clearly, um, you know, those weaknesses um, were known to the government, but it was an accepted risk, and it's just unbelievably tragic. Incidentally, the FAA revealed two months ago that it was seeking to fine American Airlines for alleged inadequate security on six flights inspected in June of 2000. And American Airlines is not alone. Uh, U.S. carriers, um, most of them have been fined and found lax at security at one point or another. So American is not alone in those uh, downfallings. Uh, but it is very tragic. And usually they were small fines. If they were caught not living up to security, they got a small fine. And uh, even officials in the FAA, their feet, uh, you know, has really, have really never been held to the fire for lax security. After Pan Am 103, our own government was widely criticized for taking a lax attitude towards aviation security. And tragically, all those recommendations were not implemented. Meanwhile, Mary, to play devil's advocate, I mean, these terrorists are extremely, extremely cagey and extremely smart. I mean, can we ever really protect our airlines from people like these. I mean, we've heard about them bringing in box cutters. Um, and, and Matt right. talked to me about some of them having knives in plastic or something in their toilet kits. I mean, can we ever be uh, completely safe from these people? 
Yes, and we have to be. That's the important point here. We have used these excuses. I mean, you know, and I was in the government too. I've heard them that, well, if some crazy wants to bring down a plane, there's nothing we can do. What the nation now understands, and I hope the government understands, is we do not have a choice. United, the United States has been brought to a standstill, and people won't realize this right away, but we live on aviation traffic. Our parcels move. Even our airplanes are built on aviation traffic deliveries. Um, we will start to feel that effect very soon, and if we cannot get control of our aviation, um, we simply can't do business in the modern world and the way we are going to do that is by implementing in many cases recommendations that the government has had mm -hmm. um, sitting in the file since Pan Am 103 and, and they will have to implement. And Mary, in fact, when flights resume at the nation's airports, passengers won't be able to check their bags at the curb in front of the terminal. They'll be subjected to random checks and they will see more uniformed security officers throughout the airport. Clearly, travelers across the country will be inconvenienced by, by uh, more intense security measures. What would you say to those travelers and passengers? Well, at this point, actually, and if the government does not make this plea, um, you know, reasonable people should realize this, and that is that the government is going to be scrambling mightily, too. Um, they have never really had to fully implement all these security measures that have been recommended for years. If people don't have to travel, I would recommend that they do not. I was supposed to travel today myself, canceled all my travel plans for a couple reasons. One, uh, the government doesn't really know how to deal with this either. Their initial response was to close the airports. That's wise. They don't know where to look. They don't know if they have to start screening all of the employees to make sure they've had the proper background checks. They don't need to. They, they don't know if there are other weapons in the airports. They don't know if baggage or parcels. Uh, remember, these uh, terrorist cells in the past have have resorted to um, letters, parcels, uh, bombs in things on planes. So they're going to have to scrub the entire facilities. And uh, finally, if, if there are you know scares in the coming days, maybe copycats, there will be disruptions in travel. So people should avoid it. But if they do travel, um, don't uh, don't cause trouble for yourself. Don't bring anything. Don't be suspicious. Answer the questions. Don't pack knives, razors, anything at all. Scissors. I mean, we've all done it accidentally. Um, and mm -hmm. that's going to be the, the really only way to get through the system. And be patient and understand that things are being done that's for right. their safety. Mary Schiavo, former FAA Inspector General. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much for talking with us, Mary. Thank you. Now here's Matt.